opportunity to stand before you. Thank you, uh, President Macaro, of course, for uh, your leadership and for extending the invitation, uh, as well as for your introduction to the National Congress of American Indians. Uh, it's an honor uh, to participate in this conference, uh, to stand before you for the first time here, and to stand before you as the House Democratic Leader. Thank you for our partnership throughout the years on substantive issues, uh, as well as our partnership in trying to create a Congress uh, that is sensitive to and respects Indian country and the Native American community. It is essential to us uh, that we honor and respect the Native American community, Indian country. Your values are our values, and we're thankful for your resilience, thankful for your strength, thankful for your spirituality, thankful for your heart and for your soul. And we are committed to making sure that just as you stood with us, more importantly, we will continue to stand with you. And to stand with you in always lifting up and respecting tribal sovereignty. To stand with you in making sure we get advanced appropriations done so we can look out for the health and the safety and the well-being of Indian country, and certainly to stand with you in making sure that we get Nahasta over the finish line. Now during the COVID-19 pandemic, at a time when communities all across the land were suffering and battling and dealing with this once in a century pandemic. I was proud at the time to be the chair of the House Democratic Caucus, but to work with Deb Holland, Betty McCollum, and Cerise Davids, and of course under the leadership of Speaker Pelosi, to make sure that in the context, yes, Speaker Pelosi, that's an applause line. By the way, the greatest speaker of all time, Nancy Del Sandro Pelosi. Makes my job tough. It's, it's kind of hard to follow Michael Jordan. Um, but I'm doing the best. We are all doing the best that we can, standing on her broad shoulders. But under her leadership and the leadership of Cerise and Deb and Betty and, and others, we were committed to make sure that in the midst of that once in a century pandemic, uh, we provided Indian country with a fairer share of the resources that you need to live the life of dignity and respect that you deserve. Because for far too long, far too long, you've been under-resourced in ways that have been intentional and ways that have undermined uh, the ability for Indian country to thrive in the way that every community throughout this land should be able to thrive. And in the context of the American Rescue Plan, we were able to provide a greater share of resources to Indian country in connection with the challenges that you face from an infrastructure and public health and resource standpoint than it had ever been previously provided in any other major piece of legislation. And that is because of your leadership, of your voice, of your commitment, which is why your presence here today will continue to be important in making sure that you hold all of us accountable for the fundamental nature of what our job is in Congress which is to stand for the people, to put people over politics, to work to find bipartisan consensus to get things done, and to ensure that in this 
land that you so treasure and respect and revere and have protected and respected uh, that you as representatives of the Native American community and Indian country can continue to ensure that every single person that you represent has the opportunity to live the life they deserve with dignity and respect. That's my commitment to you. That is why your presence here is so important. We look forward later on uh, this year to celebrating 100 years of citizenship officially being conferred and the right to vote being granted. But you have been in this land for thousands of years and we are going to respect that above all else and respect your sovereignty. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Indian country. God bless the United States of America.